Thank you to everybody. Good afternoon. Um, glad you're here with us on this Friday afternoon. Um, Palm Beach County's business partners, local business partners have uh, volunteered to come on here today and uh, give you some, some tips and tricks. Also share some, uh, some free and vital resources with you, uh, the teachers, as you, uh, you continue on in this, this online uh, learning environment, this remote teaching environment. Uh, so stay with us here for the next hour. Uh, I assure you we'll be showing you some, some pretty interesting things that you can do inside of the Google apps and also some things that you can use along with them. So take it away, folks. Thank you very much, uh, Tony. Um, you know, we, we threw this idea and this uh, concept together pretty quickly. Um, you know, if anything, just to try and provide some more um, concepts and some more resources to you, but also talk to you guys a little bit about um, tricks of the trade from the tech industry here locally. Uh, so my name is Joe Russo. I'm the CEO of the Palm Beach Tech Association. Um, I'm going to introduce our team here in a little bit, but um, one of my roles is actually uh, to lead uh, Code Palm Beach, which is a 501c3 organization that works mainly with uh, students ages 6 to 14 uh, throughout Palm Beach County with the purpose of providing a launch pad for success in computer programming. Uh, it was started by uh, George Whitaker and Sean Bogansky, who were actually on our last call uh, with the uh, uh, K-5 teachers, um, as a way to get back themselves as parents and tech professionals in the area. And you know, what better way than to uh, wrangle your kids and their friends into a coding program on the weekends. So that's what we um, wound up doing. Um, you know, I, we, I, I met them several years ago and we partnered up to formalize their volunteer effort into a nonprofit. And nowadays we have a beginner course, which happens mainly on uh, Saturdays, sometimes on uh, Friday nights um, at local libraries, the Science Center, the STEM Studio in Jupiter, and uh, then the advanced course uh, in, um, in West Palm Beach. But uh, Madison Quaylar is our administrator for Code Palm Beach. Uh, and I would love for, for her to just hop on and give you a little bit more about um, what these programs actually do and um, what, what they offer. All right, so uh, at Code Palm Beach, it really is our main mission just to give every kid everywhere the opportunity to really be immersed in STEM and STEM education. So we have our, uh, our beginner courses that we do on the weekends at a bunch of different locations throughout the Palm Beaches. Um, we're in Delray, Boca, uh, we're partnered with the Science Center, and these are gonna be very entry level sort of programs that help get students uh, just get their foot in the door when it comes to programming and kind of give them a basic understanding of what it means to code. Uh, we then also have our advanced courses, which um, are charged courses, but they are more in-depth structured look, more like a class. Um, our most popular one currently is our web development one with uh, one of our board members, Jeremy Lawson, who leads it, and a few of our tech volunteers to assist him and really give students uh, all the information they need to properly build a website. Yeah. It's got started, but they're just kind of doing an introduction. <laughs> yeah, we are, we are doing the introduction. Make sure I get everybody <laughs> muted here. Sorry about that. <laughs> Uh, and Madison, maybe if you want to give some background on yourself as we go to um, introductions. Yeah, so um, my name is Madison. I'm actually a student at Florida State currently. I'm a computer science student. Um, I started off because I started a, uh, <laughs> a coding club for kids who were just as interested as I am in uh, coding. And then I met Joe, who was like, I have this incredible opportunity for you to really get uh, STEM education in the hands of every student because that really is my goal in life is to make sure every kid can get some understanding of what it means to code because it is so important for uh, our everyday lives currently. Yeah. And uh, she's, she's done a, an awesome job and any, um, any high schooler who's said I'm going to start a club for more people to learn with me that that's something really neat. Um, <laughs> and and we're also joined by two amazing gentlemen who are tech professionals here in the Palm Beaches and are members of uh, the Palm Beach Tech Association, uh, Andy Perry from Office Depot and Aaron Wormus from SmartX. And I would love for them to introduce themselves briefly because uh, they both have students uh, in the local school system as well. So we'll start with Andy and then we'll go to uh, Aaron. Hi, hello everyone. Um, yeah, thanks Joe and Madison for putting this together, by the way, it's wonderful. Um, uh, Andrew Perry, yeah, Vice President IT, Application Development Office Depot. But really, here today, I'm in capacity as a father too. I've got a, um, a, a young girl in grade, grade six and another one in grade one. 
um, in the first grade. Um, and um, yeah, so it's been an interesting few weeks as uh, 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 changing, if you like, adapting. We've had to adapt at home here. Um, you can see I'm outside. I'm outside because apparently I make too much noise. Um, and um, so everybody's inside, yeah, okay. Um, uh, Cope Palm Beach, I've actually even got my wife um, has, been, has been to some of these sessions and she's actually been doing some coding there. So uh, I cannot, I, 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 it's, a, it's a fantastic program. All right, thanks again, Joe. Thank you, Andy. Uh, Aaron? My name is Aaron Warmus and I'm the Chief Technology Officer at uh, uh, of downtown West Palm Beach, a financial technology firm called uh, Smarts Advisory Solutions. Uh, and like Andrew, I am here uh, in the capacity of uh, a father of two teenagers. Uh, one um, is a junior in, at Suncoast and one's actually in college now. And uh, strangely enough, even though I'm very hands-on with my technology work, uh, I'm generally over my head uh, when it comes to, to my kids and their schooling needs. So first of all, uh, thanks to, to Joe for putting this on, but you know, so much more thanks to all the teachers who, who are out there working so hard uh, teaching our kids. Aaron's hilarious, if you can't, uh, can't get that. Um, so a little bit about our goals for today, and then I'm gonna pitch it to Tony in a second. Um, we want to familiarize everyone with the free online resources available. Uh, we want to provide uh, tech industry expertise uh, to um, everyone who is learning and working from home. Uh, and we want to educate everyone uh, specifically on the STEM organizations here in Palm Beach County uh, that are available and are uh, doing um, work in, the, uh, in, in uh, the industry here locally. What to expect? Um, everyone's going to have different perspectives and thoughts, right? Everyone's going to use different tools, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think when a lot of people look at um, schools, they expect uh, everything kind of be uniform, everything to be the same. Um, we obviously know that doesn't work. Everyone has their own styles, everyone has their own means, and the same thing is true in technology. Um, there are some things that we have said, okay, we're going to use this type of programming language, we're going to use this type of project management strategy, and these are the things that we're all going to work in uh, within some matter of flexibility. Um, teams work in different ways depending on how the teams are set up. Uh, and we all know that personalities can play roles in that too. So uh, we want everyone to understand some of the things we're going to talk about today, including uh, Google Classroom, are really kind of open-ended uh, to you as teachers and as professionals. And we hope um, that we're able to provide some uh, benefit and some, some resource to you. So uh, with that, I want to um, have Tony take it away, and he's just going to give them some quick highlights and updates. Thanks, Joe. Um, yeah, uh, obviously none of us were, uh, were expecting to be where we are today. And, um, you know, we're slowly finding out how, how little we were prepared uh, for this event. Um, but uh, Palm Beach County Schools' response to COVID-19 was, was as swift as it could be. Um, we sent home nearly 65,000 devices to uh, students who didn't have uh, computers or devices at their homes. We immediately saw a 200% increase in the number of Google Classrooms that our teachers are using. Um, 39,000 active Google Classrooms. Um, we, we immediately were, uh, were assisted by our vendors with, uh, with training resources and resources for our teachers and students from companies like Reading Plus, BrainPop, uh, iReady, uh, Microsoft, who is obviously, most of you know, uh, their local uh, headquarters are, are just the next county over. Um, but, uh, here's an interesting thing. 86% of our students, that's, that's a little over 150,000 students, were logged into the district portal on that first day that we, uh, that we went live with, uh, with remote teaching and distance learning. Uh, and nearly 125,000 students access Google Classroom on a daily basis. Um, so the tools are being used and our teachers and students are relying on them uh, a great deal. Uh, from a, a standpoint of career and tech ed, which is uh, the department that I work in, we've um, we, the first thing that we did was we set up a, a remote website, um, so that uh, a remote teaching website, rather, excuse me, so that our teachers had a place to go to find a lot of these resources. We found that uh, the ed tech department, professional development, um, teaching and learning, all the all of us departments were putting things together uh, for our teachers, but it, it, it was hard. Uh, 
you know, because we had already started this in motion, it was hard for our teachers to find those. So we tried to lump them all together in, in one place. Um, we, we made Adobe and Microsoft software available at home for our teachers and students. Um, and, and we want to thank Adobe and Microsoft for, for uh, helping us out with that quite a bit. Um, and then we also had to, we had to come up with some alternatives because we learned that quite a few of our students and teachers went home with Chromebooks, great little devices, um, not able to install Adobe or Microsoft or, or, or a lot of other software on it. So we came up with some alternative resources that our teachers and students could use through Office 365, uh, some other web apps that, uh, that imitate Adobe um, uh, programs so that our students and teachers could continue uh, the process of teaching, learning, and instruction. Um, something else that we've been doing uh, all semester was implementing Minecraft for EDU uh, in the classroom. Uh, we had uh, some Minecraft for EDU live webinars because we had to, we had to cancel some face-to-face -face trainings that we had set up. And Microsoft, Digital Labs, and I2E came to our rescue immediately. We shifted gears. And we were able to provide um, some, some pretty cool things to our teachers and students. Uh, with Minecraft for EDU, any, any of you that, that aren't, aren't aware of it, uh, Minecraft for EDU is a little bit different from the regular Minecraft game. Uh, Minecraft for EDU is a, is a great place for kids to go and learn how to code, but it's also a really fun collaborative place for teachers and students to go and meet and to learn about science, math, uh, social studies. There are hundreds of lessons uh, built into the Minecraft for EDU game environment. Uh, to make learning fun and um, and honestly I mean we're all locked in our houses it's, it's, it's a great opportunity to kind of break up the monotony and do it in an educational way um, but something something that's that's going to be front and center for career and tech ed is always going to be making sure that our students our graduates are prepared to uh, to take uh, jobs here uh, with local industry so we are preparing students for success on industry certifications every day uh, remote testing is is happening. It's about to start here in our district, and we just want to make sure that even though we're teaching from home, we're learning from home, uh, our students are still going to graduate and be ready to uh, uh, to take these these jobs that are that are here, um, you know, in, in our community. Uh, Tony, could you could you explain how the industry certifications are going to happen remotely? I'm teaching the site development associate certification hey Andy how are you good to see you buddy good, good. Um, this is that we're, we're, we're gonna do some webinars next week I know uh, Maurice de Rossier is gonna do one uh, for the CIW test I'm gonna do one for the cert report test Here, here's the thing with 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 the industry certifications um, every testing agency has a different process right now for how uh, it's being done some of the vendors are providing proctoring for us other vendors are expecting us to do the proctoring and um, when we proctor an exam, we need to be able to remote in to that student's computer. And, and it's not a passive thing. We need to actually go in and be able to control the student's keyboard. Um, we don't have a way set up to do that here within the district. Um, IT and uh, ed tech are working on that actually right now. We had a call this morning about it. So uh, we're trying to piece all those things together. For those of you that give tests through CertiPort, uh, we're ready to roll. It seems like it just seems like the other testing vendors, because of the process, um, we're having to, to uh, really work on that, uh, you know, one piece at a time uh, to get that to get that rolling. But rest assured, we'll have it going uh, very soon. And uh, as I as I said, we are planning specific webinars targeted to CIW, one targeted to the CertiPort testing to kind of give you a run through. A walkthrough, I should say, not a run through. We're going to go slowly and uh, show you exactly what the process looks like for setting these testing opportunities up for your students. Awesome. So um, we're going to uh, go on to some tips and tricks. Um, these are some things really related to uh, Google Classroom that we're going to uh, talk about and talk about the principles of technology around some of these tips that are what. Uh, some of our guests use and some of our uh, other tech companies use on a daily basis. So, um, let's see here. Sorry, I'm trying to reorganize how my Zoom is. Okay. Um, so, uh, a, a few of the things that we're um, going to dive into. This is actually the first slide. Perfect. Uh, starting with clarity, um, when we talk about project management in technology, one of the things that we really get into a lot is making sure that people understand what is expected of them and people understand um, what uh, is expected of you. 
So when we're developing project management strategies for let's say building a technology platform or building a product, uh, these expectations are very really laid out because you know the idea is not to have meetings consistently. It's not to I'll have be right back. It's um, okay. and make sure everyone gets their, I was pretty sure I muted everyone, but uh, of course there's always uh, one or two that are not. So if you are on here and you're not muted, um, well, please make sure you are. Okay, so um, when we put out a, um, a project internally within our organization, uh, we set uh, what are the expectations of it. Now when you're in person, uh, and you're having meetings consistently, uh, it's not as, as it's not the same, right? You can be a little bit more um, one step at a time about it. Uh, when we're doing project management through, let's say, an agile methodology, which is everybody is kind of doing their own things and then coming back and then going out and then coming back, you know, these expectations really um, set the the playground there. So um, that's something that we we wanted to um, go through. And then George and uh, his team at the PGA of America who developed some of the softwares and some of the tools for the largest golf events in the world um, helped build this plan. Um, and the other side of this is understanding what your students see. Uh, so we talk a lot about user experience. Um, user experience is what the user sees and their experience of it um, when they're going through it. The thing I always like to, um, to do is, you know, the push-pull hand handle when you're um, you know, working on the door. You know, if you don't have the, the push or the pull there, you might not know which way it's gonna go. And that's user experience um, issue. Understanding what your students see and understanding that other side of that process could really help if you have not done it so far. Understand you know, maybe what are you seeing that's different from them as you're going through that whole process. And you know, when we have um, some of our companies that are building products and building tools, they have entire teams that are built on the user experience stuff. Not just collecting feedback, but also doing interviews before they even put the, um, the tool out there to understand how people are uh, engaging with it and how people are utilizing it. Um, oh, hang on, there we go. All right, uh, classroom, uh, one stop shop. Uh, so these are some of the um, different uh, settings that we get into. So Zoom, for example, uh, we always go through the settings of whatever tool that we're uh, going to get into. The, um, the one-stop communication shop, making sure that you have that, um, that stream set up as uh, move, move around over here. That makes it more simple or easy um, with, your, with your students is uh, really important. The same as I should have just um, you know, rearranged my windows here uh, so I could see the, uh, the slides with my Zoom, um, you know, that there's a uh, experience issue there too. Going back to um, the topic, we talked about clarity for uh, a little bit, um, making sure the topics are in chronological order, making sure that there are, um, uh, th there's a workflow that students and parents can see. This is really prominent when we're talking about a, uh, a, a project timeline or a uh, product roadmap to understand not what is just in front of us, but what's coming up uh, even beyond uh, today or tomorrow or the next week. Because uh, that helps our teams plan, and that helps our teams stay organized as well when we are thinking about um, you know, what what we right, do prioritizing. All right. There's always that one person on the call, right, guys? Uh, just let me know when you have the time sheet up. Okay, Kathleen, if you can hear me, can you mute? Because uh, for some reason, I'm not able to mute. In that drive. Kathleen, are you there? Okay. Hello? Yep. Hey, could you mute yourself, please? Sorry. Yeah, no worries. We're good now. All right, and this is uh, some other feedback from um, the parents who were uh, building out these, um, th these tools and this information with us. Uh, keeping the titles uh, unique. You notice here the assignment for 4.3 and assignment for 4.3. Um, you know, making sure that each thing is um, unique is helping parents out right now um, and making sure that they can get their workflows um, best there for, for students and vice versa. Uh, I'm going to skip um, just a, a couple of these just to kind of get back into it. Um, you see the um, project management bit here too. Um, we do a lot with due dates. 
uh, and understanding when um, uh, priorities are due, sometimes we just put that right back on the professional, right? In this case, back on the student to say, here's the, here's the date, make sure you have it in, make sure you have those um, out there uh, really, really, really early on. Um, because if, you know, we make an assignment or we task a project and there's no due date on it, uh, it can get backburdened a lot and then people don't do it. And, um, you know, without um, those priorities set, we don't just, we, we, we just don't see things as, um, as effective. When uh, project management is done at scale, there are dedicated project managers and scrum masters and other folks who, whose job it is to make sure all of these things are filled out, all of these fields are filled out. So every person on that team knows what their expectations are very thoroughly uh, throughout the whole project. Um, we talked about a little bit of clarity and instructions. Uh, this is another example of being very, very thorough with those and making sure that all of the information is in there, including all of the um, relevant links. And then um, talking a little bit about um, templates. So no need to create one thing over and over and again. Uh, I have a rule internally, if you do something twice, figure out a way to automate it. Um, reusing a post is a simple you know, automation tool. So you don't have to go through and do something over and over again at the same time and just copy and paste and rewrite everything. Um, anytime you can find a way to automate your processes to make things simpler, makes things very easy. You can get done at four o'clock instead of five o'clock on a Friday and, uh, and, and have that extra relaxing time. Uh, checking the pulse. This is something that's really big on uh, remote teams right now because we're not engaging interpersonally. So when we're talking about um, keeping teams happy from a tech professional aspect, it's the same thing as about keeping students' morale high, right? So uh, there are some companies, I actually talked to a startup company in Delray Beach this morning who is uh, launching a tool to do regular check-ins with team members on a variety of questions, right? Uh, this example here um, from uh, Liz was uh, a question you see on the bottom right. Uh, today, I am a ninja, I am a rock star, or I need a hug. And uh, I, you know, I'm sure if I had uh, a student or somebody I was working with that said they needed a hug, I would feel, oh my gosh, you know, you, you got something going on. Uh, and a lot of times we, we, we forget the fact we're so laser focused on getting our assignments done, getting our projects done, that we don't always gut check ourselves to see how is the team doing. In this case, how are your students doing? Um, this is uh, something that um, uh, folks have been getting a lot more into because there's a lot more interpersonal, a lot less interpersonal communication going on because you're not seeing e each other in the office. You're not able to do a regular check-in. You might do a call, but you might not actually, you know, understand context clues so much or be able to communicate as effectively about what's going on with that person. Uh, this is something about gamification um, that we, we we talk about as nerds. I don't know if anyone's heard of an Easter egg, but uh, there are Easter eggs in games. And they're like little funky, clever things. Um, I'm playing a game right now where there are little Easter eggs kind of hidden about that are fun when you find them. And the whole idea is that in the assignments, there's something kind of neat at the end of the, the, the road. Um, you know, Ready Player One, if you guys saw that movie, the whole concept around it was there was an Easter egg hidden in this game. And to win the game and uh, basically the, the plot of the movie, you had to find the Easter egg and understand what it was. And the first one was in an Atari game and it looked like an Easter egg, which was the whole point of it. But uh, that gamification model, if you can find a way to help gamify some of your uh, assignments, um, these are um, some of the ways that the products and the services that we use on a daily basis have been able to really uh, take off. Uh, you know, we see video games as sometimes a tool, sometimes a, a, a con versus a pro, but there's a reason people keep going back because there's an achievement model that's built into it that people keep finding. Uh, shortcuts, also a big thing about remote uh, teamwork. Um, understand the Windows computers, Control-D mutes all. Uh, I have a Mac, so I can't do that. Uh, Control-E toggles camera. Um, there's a lot of different, uh, I hear somebody just try that. Uh, there's a lot of different other shortcuts um, that you can um, utilize. Um, you know, we're on Zoom today, but uh, Google um, Meets has um, a lot of other um, information out there if you want to check that out. Office hours as well. That's something that um, we've started doing in tech. Uh, if you know, I have a link out there. So if anyone wants to schedule time with me, they can schedule time with me. Um, if your students are uh, able to do that, you have this um, office hours uh, bit here. 
Uh, we talked a little bit more about uh, guardian emails on the last um, the last call. I, I, I think than than needed for kind of the older older group here, uh, but just something um, reasonable to hit on. And then um, you know feedback. Um, feedback is huge for us. Feedback loops um, to understand what's going on. Um, you know. I don't think a lot of people look at the feedback and say, hey, I have a problem, let's report it. But you should be reporting that if you're running into issues to help solve it. If we, we were dealing with a project today that we didn't get feedback on and there was negative feedback. So we actually had to push for the feedback to understand what we did or did not do. And this is something really big when trying to build a technology that your consumers actually um, giving some information back so you can build upon that. There are some additional resources. We're going to follow this up in a, our email about uh, a, this cheat sheet here. Uh, this is a Google slide that um, that's link is there. You don't have to worry about trying to copy that down. We're going to share it out, but uh, just some other um, information. I know some people on this, this is probably preaching to the choir. Um, you know, we're just trying to provide a little bit of a tech uh, perspective on it. Um, and, you know, when we're talking about uh, a lot of the the, the things that we went over, uh, th this might not be news to you. Um, we're just trying to make sure we're providing um, every little bit of uh, information and resource. And then when we get into some of the panel discussion, we can uh, take some direct questions too. Uh, so coding resources, I am going to um, pitch this to Madison and she's gonna walk you through this. All right, so at Code Palm Beach, we use a variety of different free resources and we thought it would be very nice to share some of those with you guys. So we have our Code Palm Beach student typer. Uh, this was actually developed by one of our board members, Jeremy Lawson, is a really great guy. So this tool is perfect for beginners who either need practice typing, aren't really familiar with a keyboard, or who also want to practice HTML, but at a very basic level. So this is a perfect entry point for any student you might have who is interested in programming, but has never really taken that first step to really get there. Um, it's perfect. It runs through many different uh, test sentences for students to practice out with. And it really helps those uh, younger kids get familiar with the keyboard. Uh, we also have code.org. Um, code.org is really fun as well. It's basically just playing games. Uh, there's two different courses they have. They have their pre-reader express, which is for four to eight, but um, they have their uh, express course, which is for students nine to 18. I myself still use code.org if I'm looking to learn a new skill and I uh, don't really want to dive into the world of very scary uh, adult kind of coding because it's just a really fun game where you kind of get to hop around. Uh, there's Star Wars themed ones for any nerds out there where you can be BB-8 and just kind of hop around on these little fields. It's a it's a really great time but it's also a really useful tool. Uh, Free Code Camp is another one of my favorites. It's actually where I started to learn to code in like middle school, early high school. Um, this is perfect for high school age kids. Uh, this is a real coding sort of platform. Um, it just runs through a bunch of tutorials. Uh, you can use many different languages. But this is definitely more a uh, textbook type coding where you're reading a prompt and there's like a, a problem that you need to do. It does give you step-by-step -step instructions, which makes it very easy to understand even for the earliest of programmers but it is definitely an amazing tool for anybody who's trying to just start out or even those who have been coding for years and are interested in a new language. Uh, Code Combat is also a really fun one. Uh, for anybody who has students who like to play Minecraft, this would also be a really great game. Um, it really is just Minecraft sort of stuff with coding. Uh, you could be a knight, you can be an org, you can be so many different things and you have to code your way through all these different challenges, uh, finding all these gems and leveling up, getting more armor. It's super fun and a lot of students don't even really realize they're learning. Um, this game is really great for students who aren't really inclined to code but like playing games. Uh, it's a great way to subconsciously learn something. And it's something I enjoy. <laughs> I have a membership myself. <laughs> and it's something really fun to do on the weekends. So I'll, uh, I'll hit on the, the Science Center as well, real quick, um, before we get into our conversation. Um, the Science Center is one of our key partners for Code Palm Beach. Um, we host a lot of events and programs with them. They have some really great things going on right now as well. You might have uh, seen 
Um, my favorite is the fact that they're doing a Rube Goldberg machine making contest as part of their virtual science fair. I am sadly too old to take part. Uh, but there are some really um, awesome uh, things that they have going on. You can find on their website. Uh, if you go to their homepage, you'll see the virtual science link and you can go from there. And there are also some really other great organizations. These are some of the ones that we've worked with in the past and we're continuing to do some stuff with Manatee Lagoon, the Palm Beach Zoo, um, Loggerhead. They're all doing some fun things online where they're uh, just featuring some of the work that uh, they're doing via video. Uh, Power Video is very strong right now. Uh, so anybody who can um, find a way to create some tangibility in the work that they do through video, um, you're, you're seeing that a lot um, right now. So we just wanted to, um, you know, highlight those and just kind of make reference to them um, in case uh, you guys are interested. Uh, I'd like to bring on uh, our panel here for a little bit. Um, and, um, you know, this is the time too when if you guys have questions, uh, feel free to dump them in the chat or you can raise your hand on the video. Um, here and uh, like not just literally raise your hand but there is a raise your hand feature there on your on your dashboard um, but uh, bringing back in Aaron and Andy I would love to kind of hear um, what some of the things that you guys have been doing at home or you have done at home uh, to uh, uh, help your help your students help your um, kids out during this time and you know keep them learning on the uh, on the stem front You there, guys? I'll go ahead and, and take that. Uh, so, so for me, it's a, it's like I mentioned earlier, it's a very interesting uh, dynamic because uh, I am very much involved in the, the tech uh, the tech industry, and I'm very happy that my girls are very interested in that as well. So I kind of get to see them uh, growing through all the different levels and all the different teachers. Um, so for me, I think. What I've done that has been uh, the most valuable is to really encourage my kids to, to, to talk to their teachers and to ask questions. Because especially in, in STEM, uh, you know, there's some, uh, some people who don't take to it uh, just natively and sometimes they need just a little more, uh, a little more help. Of, you know, a couple, couple of questions answered uh, can really push them uh, over the top. Uh, over the edge, I, I should say. Um, also, as far as resources go, uh, you know, I'm kind of old school, uh, and I have watched so many Khan Academy videos that I can't even, um, you know, I can't even list them all. But I still, there are some things where, you know, they uh, they come to me with a specific question, and I know that there's a there's a video online on Khan Academy that addresses that uh, very uh, specifically. Um, because they also really love, uh, you know, learning uh, stuff. I always tell them to to go over to uh, Udemy as well and take uh, random courses or do something that's maybe an hour or two. They have time, so that's that's something that uh, that they do, and I'm happy that they are, you know, uh, anxious to do that type of work. Um, another thing that is kind of interesting with my younger daughter is that she started very early on, probably three or four years ago, using her iPad uh, for everything. Uh, and she does all of her homework on her iPad. And, you know, she, she really uses it, you know, totally uh, instead of using paper. And, uh, you know, I think in the beginning, teachers had a, had a hard time dealing with it. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think it really put her in a position where uh, now there's really nothing different. She really does most of her homework uh, online and all of her classes online as well. So. I think even uh, you know when when everything goes back to normal, having uh, a focus on getting the kids using uh, you know new technology is really going to help them out. So you know in a way this is you know maybe just the push that we need to get everybody on uh, using these tools. Andy, I'm challenged with the mute button. Yeah. Um, um, uh, well, you know, what's interesting, the, the, uh, firstly, just a, a shout out to um, Palm Beach County and the schools and all the teachers. Um, I, was at, I was actually immensely impressed with how fast you guys got up, got up and running. And to get 86% of students utilizing the platform, I'd love to get 86% of my users implemented some of, the, some of the releases that I do sometimes, yeah? Um, so I think you've done an awesome job. So a big, you know, round of applause to everyone. Thank you. 
Um, from the kids' point of view, it's interesting because um, the, 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 they, they were already kind of used to using these tools, um, these online tools. Um, and, um, and, and the Google Classroom, I know my 12-year-old, she uses it all the time. My, my uh, seven-year-old was very much into, into um, using iReady, and, and we already had her in a program using iReady. So it was an extension of, um, of uh, what they kind of all, were already doing. What we had to, what we quickly figured out was the 12 year old was, um, she was getting things done really quick and she is, she's still coming in at nine, nine thirty, saying I've done all my work and I'm like doing a double take, hold on. And like you Aaron, and I'm like, oh, come on, then let's go off and, and, and then let's do some other things. And I've written down all the resources that you just uh, called out by the way. And um, the seven year old is different. The seven year old, we still got a, there's still the interaction with the teacher. There's still the interaction with Google Classroom, and there's the task. But we've got to sit there and 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 kind of you know act like a, a home teacher, if you like. And we weren't used to that. We kind of were expecting it to be all, just all all automatic. Um, and um, and so that's we've had to adapt at home, and that's caused a little bit. That's why I'm sitting outside, yeah, not inside. Yeah. <laughs> we've had to to move around. Um, we have also. Um, yeah, and, and you know, we talk, you talked about uh, Udemy, and there's Roblox, and there's other there's other platforms that we kind of um, I have my kids into. My 12 year old very much, um, she's always into building new things, and so she's on YouTube quite a lot, learning on how to build new things. So they have been active, um, uh, but there has also been some slipper. You know, there's some things with lessons to be learned. For example, the 12 year old completed some work the other day. And this happens at work, by the way, with our learning management platform. Um, we, uh, she completed a lot of work over a number of days and then somehow the, 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 the platform she was working in got reset. And she went in to do some work and all her previous work had gone. And she got really upset. So, um, you know, I, I kind of explained, her, I think it's a mistake. There had to be interaction with the teacher. Um, there was emails going back and forth. It wasn't like she could just talk to the teacher there and then. Um, so there was, you know, I can see how we just we just have to be mindful of um, uh, you know, some of these platforms not working or whatever. Sometimes, you know, because we're all learning at the same time. Um, and then, and then just one other, one other piece was that social interaction. And I know, I mean, I don't know about you, Aaron, but my kids are talking. They've got their own not Zoom accounts, but FaceTime. They've got their own iPad. They're talking. Well, yeah, between breaks, they are talking to the other kids. They're doing projects together. That's another thing which is which has worked really well. Which I think some some so, uh, with the twelve year old, she's had projects assigned to her, and two or three of the classmates have got together to work on them as a mini little group in their own Zoom meeting, and that has worked really well. They've really, and I I, I think that's kind of helped them get through some of their tasks. So just some of the experiences we've had here um, back here in Delray. Yeah, but again, big Tony, you should be proud. You guys did an awesome job, and all the teachers here. Awesome. Um, we did have a question uh, come in with a hand uh, up. Thanks, thanks, Andrew. Um, yeah, I, I'd like to chime in with a, a couple of things if I can. Um, yeah, sure. Uh, you know, and, and this is one of the things that we said to the earlier group. Um, we, we've got to be cognizant of how much time we are all spending glued to our devices. I mean, now that we're we're working from home. Um, Students are learning from home. Uh, obviously, this is a huge change in in, uh, in the way that we go about doing things. Uh, and, and I know, uh, you know, I have a, a nine-year-old daughter. She spends almost the entire day, um, you know, in front of a, a device now, uh, 14 inches from her face. So it, it's it's important to pace things. And this is not just from a parent's perspective, but the teacher who's building that that online curriculum, um, being able to pace your lessons out, making sure that your 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 students and their families have some some, some break time some time to go uh you know outside ride a bike um feel the feel the, the 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 gorgeous weather that we have out here right now um uh but you know like for us uh when things get a little bit uh monotonous or the lessons are, are taking too long uh, a, a nice a nice way to switch it up is to uh is to take the computer from from our daughter and, and cast it onto the the tv screen so yeah she's still working it's still uh, you know, she's still in her Google Classroom, but she's sitting on the couch, 12 to 15 feet away from the the the, uh, the screen instead of having it 14 inches from her face. Um, you know, just little little things like that. Um, 
and as teachers, as educators, we've got to find a way to, uh, you know, motivate our students now online. And it, for some of us, it's a lot easier to do that in the classroom by using our personalities. When you know, now we've got to find ways to do that through Google Classroom and through some of these other, some of these other tools. To let our personalities shine through and to keep our students in, uh, engaged and excited about what we have to teach them. So it's, this is no easy task. And I know a lot of us uh, have never done this before. And uh, there was no, um, there was no guide that, that, that we were given before we uh, embarked on this journey. So, um, you know, uh, it, it, for me, I'm, I'm touched that uh, our local business partners wanted to uh, volunteer and do this with us uh, here today. Uh, it, it shows their commitment to making sure that uh, our, our schools, teachers, students, administrators are all successful. And, um, and I just really wanna thank the teachers for taking the time out today to, to join us here as well. Um, so this was a this was a really good event. So I'm I'm just I'm very thankful to have been part of it. Yeah, and thank you, Tony, for for putting all this together. Um, you know, I I like uh, I like the fact that we have um, you, you know made some solid inroads. And for I know you guys are all teaching in your classrooms, but um, Tony and I have talked in that I don't know how many times, and uh, you know a lot of the other teams at the school district. So they're working really hard too uh, to to we keep the, the dots connected. Uh, we did have a hand raised um, from Frida uh, to ask a question. Uh, and um, I wanted to uh, throw it back to her um, here in a second. If you want to unmute yourself and uh, feel free to go ahead. Well, it wasn't so much a question as I wanted to thank Palm Beach for everything they're doing. My son is a 16 year old and um, he goes to Boynton Beach High. Ms. Krupski is on the line with us. She's a wonderful teacher. Um, I've gotten all the support I need. From all the teachers, I usually go through SIS because I'm not that educated on Google, but I'm getting there. Um, my son has been doing Google since middle school, thank God, so he really doesn't need my help on that. But as a parent, what I realize is my son was has his computer set up in his bedroom. So he was it was too close to his bed, so he would do his work and then sit on his bed and do other things and get distracted. So as of today, we moved his computer into my living room so that he can't fall onto his bed and he can get outside and get his fresh air. We're working on that. As you said, it's important for them to get a change of pace because they're so you know, prone to be on their computer playing their games or whatever they do. But um, like I said, SIS has been a great tool. I've been really communicating with the teachers that way because it's comfortable for me and all the teachers interact with me and they get right back to me. They have a full schedule, so to take the time out and um, they appreciate the feedback from a parent because I know they're so overwhelmed trying to get their jobs done so meticulously as they are. So I just wanna thank everybody. I'm working on making sure that my son stays engaged in his work as well as his downtime. And I appreciate what you shared today. And um, yeah, well, lessons for me too to get her at Google Classroom, which is which I think is a great tool. Thanks again. Thank you. Um, so I, I wanted to throw um, again. Feel free to throw some questions in the chat. I wanted to throw uh, a question at Andy and a question at Aaron, uh, both individually. And first to, to Andy, um, you are one of the biggest nerds I know. And uh, I mean, <laughs> but uh, you've built actually a, um, some um, some machinery and some engineering, some three D printers uh, on your own uh, in your garage. And yeah. uh, I, I'm kind of curious um, how doing that as a parent uh, has really kind of engaged uh, your kids and lear the learning experience of that that engineering process. It was it was their fault, uh, Joe. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, my my twelve year old, she was probably eight or nine at the time she was on youtube all the time and she's watching she's watching people play games or open gifts or whatever yeah and it was driving me absolutely crazy so i said to her, let's go let's let's find a, a youtube series on how to make something and we found a, a whole series on how to make a 3d printer um and um and you know piece by piece by piece and uh, we ordered all the parts off of Alibaba and other, and other, and other places. And we, they all came in and, and we went through this video series and we built this 3D printer, which then has gone through many iterations now. And we could all probably sit on it. It's so strong now, this thing's huge. 
Um, and we still use it. Even this morning, I was printing out um, a phone stand, yeah? Okay, and in fact, Gabby printed this thing out, yeah? Um, uh, uh, because we're FaceTiming so much with the phones, yeah? Right, so I needed a stand. Um, but that's, that actually went on to where we built a CNC machine and now have a laser cutter. And, and the thing is, what I'm teaching the kid is, is it, it, you actually don't need to know all the engineering, but you just need to know where to search and how to search. There's somewhere someone's made something beforehand. And, 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 and you know, don't be afraid to try. And they're starting to do that now. The 12 year olds starting to do that on their own, which is pretty interesting. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I have actually some stickers on my laptop here that Andy uh, 3D uh, printed, or actually uh, laser cut for me as well. Um, yeah. so, so Aaron, uh, one of the things I've, I've noted too, like uh, being your friend over the years, uh, your daughters have actually had uh, some sort of uh, influence and some constructive uh, side to uh, to your blog that you've had, including uh, a little bit on the social media side. Um, but how have you been able to kind of get them a little bit involved? And do you now have TikTok because of them? I absolutely have TikTok uh, because of them. Uh, they are also on their computers. Uh, a lot. They're on their phones and they're on their uh, iPads and all their devices. Um, but you know, I think that's just kind of the way that uh, that they are. And I think that they uh, like now they're they're both out and about and they left their devices at home. But because Andrew brought a prop, I'm gonna get a prop too if you don't mind. <laughs> Lo I love it. <laughs> this, this is something that I got uh, just to play with, and it's a it's a very simple traffic light. You bought it for a hundred bucks, and with my kids, I got a simple Arduino controller, and we programmed the traffic light. And you know, we did it in an evening, and it was really not at all hard to do, and it was so much fun. And uh, I think that, like uh, like Andrew said, knowing where to look knowing what some projects you can do with your kids are. And if your kids can figure out Minecraft or some of these complex games that they play, they can definitely figure out programming something uh, as simple as a traffic light. I mean, oh. there's, no, there's only so many options for the, for the light, right? Right. Yeah, the Instructables. I find Instructables is a great site for doing those kind of Arduino and all those other projects. Yeah, they learn all sorts of new crafts on that site. It's an interesting one. Yeah, and something I've, I've been looking up at, um, and I don't know how it would be as applicable to a curriculum, but, um, it, you know, um, Aaron, I know you met um, Adam Savage not that uh, long ago, the Mythbusters guys. Um, there was still some pretty interesting stuff on YouTube um, that um, is really tangible. I, I think that's probably the hard thing right now is how to find some tangibility in the learning, being it's like all on a screen. And I, I, I don't know if you, you're, you're still watching that or you, you have any other um, places that you've gone to look for that, like Instructables. Well, I, look, I enjoy watching all kinds of electronics shows. So there's one, uh, Electro Boom. And the kids, they know like all the YouTubers as well. And there's a ton of YouTubers out there who are doing hobbyist projects and making you know, cool things. Uh, so Electro Boom is a lot of fun. Uh, I watch that. but. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a ton of resources out there for whatever you you want to do, and you know, even even with the harder projects, like my kids, uh, they come to me with a project, and I don't I don't remember how to do that. I don't really know right off, but just sitting them and and going through the process of okay, well, explain to me what the project is, explain to me you know how you're working through this, and just kind of talk them through the basic structure of what they're trying to do, and you know they they'll figure it out. They'll look at that code. And I have no idea what it's supposed to do. And they'll say, oh, I see what I did wrong. You know, and then move forward from there. So that's something that all parents can do. Just sit with your kid and, and try to you know, work through the process with them. Yeah. And with that, too, uh, uh, for anybody who um, signed up for today, on the Eventbrite, uh, there were the two resource links. Uh, one to the Code Palm Beach site, which has all of those coding resources on it, and the other to the Science Center site, which has all of those. But um, you know, there also is, and I am going to press the escape button here. If you go to our Palm Beach Tech uh, website, uh, something that we've done 
um, before, and I'll just uh, you know, go there. And we, we obviously put it on hold with the, the time being. You go to our resources tab, and then speakers bureau. You can uh, plug in your information here, and if you would like for anybody um, to come and speak to you from the tech industry, uh, here in Palm Beach County, uh, you can put in your information, what you're looking for, and uh, you know it'd be pretty easy just to pull somebody um, in on a Zoom call just to tell you a little bit about what uh, their job in tech is doing right now. So this is a resource that um, that we have that I think would also be um, very very capable. Again, it's just PalmBeachTech.org/speakers-bureau, and you can find it just very simply on the site. Um, so if you're trying to look for a little something to get out of the normal. Um, you know, we can uh, reach out to our network and uh, find you a uh, guest speaker um, who can uh, do some some other stuff. Again, we, we we had to we were working on some right before uh, COVID nineteen hit for uh, a few teachers, and then you know everything kind of derailed us. But this is something we'd love to start doing again and um, start getting people connected. And just to give you a little bit of background, our organization has um, over a hundred and uh, 70 members. We represent over 8,000 technology employees, and these are some of our our companies. Um, so, if any of these companies or the other ones look uh, awesome, which they all are, trust me, uh, you can uh, you know fill out that form and you know put in a little bit, and we can always find somebody uh, to speak to you uh, from any of those guys. So, uh, Ilo, we have a few, just a couple minutes left, and wanted to um, leave it open just in case anybody might have had a question that they. I uh, forgot to ask. All right, uh, Tony. I don't know if you have anything else to uh, to throw into the mix here. Do not. Not on Friday at four p.m. I do not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, uh, Valerie, uh, raise your hand. Here, I'm gonna unmute you. That's okay. Go ahead. Wait, I can't Hi. unmute her. Yeah, I'm. There you go. That was a group effort for that, huh? Yeah. Right. Uh, I have a student who's um, coding on Unreal Engine and uh, Play Canvas. He, he's so far past my pay grade. And he needs help. He made a game and it's making a jumping noise when the jump is stopped. Is there anyone available that would be able to help him? We've been trying for about three months to find him someone to help him out. Jeez. On Unreal Engine? He's gone Unreal Engine, Play Canvas. I'm having trouble with JavaScript. I'm asking him for help. Yeah, right. So just for the benefit of everyone else, Unreal Engine is the gaming engine that Fortnite is built on. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's the... Hmm. It, it's the software that runs all of that. So, um, I, I, you know what, if you can shoot me an email, I'm going to dump my uh, email into the chat here. Um, there are a couple of people that I know do some stuff on, on gaming and, um, unity. I can dig around a little bit for that, but yeah, that's a, that's yeah, a next level. Awesome. And we don't have a big gaming industry in South Florida either. Uh, so in Orlando, electronic arts has a big, um, office for example. So there's um, electronic arts, there's full sale, which uh, focuses on game development for higher education. Uh, so there are those type of uh, hubs out there. Just South Florida isn't a, uh, a gaming hub. Should I send you a copy of the code that he's having issues with too, so you can forward it or? Uh, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Me first. either. <laughs> it's so but, far. But, but, but connect, connect me and let me, let me, let me just bounce, bounce around because it, it's not so much the code. It's the, the type of code. You got to find somebody who knows um, Unreal Engine or just gaming design. Perfect. Thank you. All right. You can... All right. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, joining the call today. I do have this recorded, so we're going to share this out with, um, with Tony so he can get it to um, everyone. But uh, enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. And uh, thank you for, for hopping on. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. everybody.